reactions of alkanes. Um, in previous lessons, I've um, outlined how to go about uh, naming different alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. In this lesson, we're going to really focus on the different types of reactions that can, can occur. And, and one type of reaction that we've already looked at with regards to alkanes, uh, well, we can generalize these and refer to them as hydrocarbons. And reactions that involve hydrocarbons are typically referred to as combustion reactions. Right? So take, for example, some kind of a hydrocarbon um, as such. And so let's look at something like methane. Right? And in a combustion reaction, you have your hydrocarbon reacting in the presence of oxygen. And we're going to assume that they're in the presence of lots of oxygen, uh, uh, an unlimited supply of oxygen. And it will always produce the following reaction or the following products, carbon dioxide plus water. And these are the, uh, the typical combustion reactions um, that are useful uh, in terms of uh, fuels and um, you know propane gas that we use uh, for gas uh, barbecues and such. However, sometimes we have different types of reactions, right? Look at this, like we're combining oxygen with this hydrocarbon. But what happens, as I'm showing here with this example here, um, how does such a reaction take place? Now, the thing is, with these, what we call saturated uh, hydrocarbons and saturated hydrocarbons, just means that the carbons only have single bonds, right? And so notice only single bonds all around each one of the carbons to these uh, different hydrogens or a single bond that bonds between these, these carbons. Obviously, there can only be a single bond anyways between carbon and hydrogen. But carbon and carbon have the ability to have single bonds, double bonds, or even triple bonds. But single bonds are referred to as saturated hydrocarbons. And typically, uh, the bonds here, right? So the bond here between these carbons are typically very difficult um, to break right, amongst um, uh, these saturated hydrocarbons. Right. However, in such a reaction, atoms, or right, in terms of these, uh, these alkanes, um, not these alkanes, sorry, these halogens actually have the ability to react with the hydrogens um, of various uh, alkanes. Right. So we have, uh, let's look at a couple of, uh, of examples with regards to um, some of the halogens, right? Think about something like fluorine gas, we've got bromine gas, we've got chlorine gas. Of these three, this is the most reactive. Um, however, using, let's say, bromine and chlorine, for something like this to actually occur, a reaction would require heat or UV light in order to cause this reaction to take place. So what happens, right? So when heat or ultraviolet light um, is present, what happens is the, this bromine is going to dissociate first. And what's going to happen, it's going to substitute with one of these outer hydrogens around carbon. And just for argument's sake, what I'm going to do is we're going to um, switch this this bromine, one of these bromines, doesn't really matter, but I'm going to erase one of these bromines. Right? And I'm going to erase one of these hydrogens because what's going to happen is the bromine is going to switch places with that hydrogen. Right? So it's going to switch places with the hydrogen. And here we have something called an alkyl hydride, an alkyl, or sorry, not, well, halide, should I say, alkyl halide, right? Because it's an alkyl group, right? Um, it's an alkene, and it carries a halogen um, atom within it. So pretty much this halogen atom acts 
as a functional group, right? So, uh, and that pretty much uh, the organic family that it belongs to is this alkyl halide, right? Now, the thing is, bromine, right, is typically orange in color, right? So, th so this, right, this Br2 is typically orange in color. So, when this takes, when this reaction originally took place, to form this, and I should have maybe redrawn it here, but what I did was just erase uh, what originally uh, happened. So when this reaction takes place to form this bromine that, that substitutes in with one of the hydrogens, and the hydrogens, they almost switch places, what happens is this HBr that is formed now will literally turn blue litmus paper in blue litmus paper, it'll turn it red. Why? Because now that orange that we originally had, or right when we introduced this, um, you know, this, um, this, the, the ethane molecule here with bromine, it was originally orange. But eventually, this reaction would turn litmus paper red because we are now forming this acid. So now what happens with this reaction if I continue to include more bromine gas? Well, what's going to happen is one more um, of these hydrogens is going to be removed. And we'll end up getting another bromine molecule. So all of a sudden, notice that now the name is going to change. So let's go back, actually. Right, let's undo some of this. So the name now for this compound is referred to as a bromoethane molecule. Right? So we've got, and what's the alkyl? So we refer to it as a, uh, this alkyl halide. What kind of alkyl halide is it? Well, it's an ethyl, is the alkyl group. And what is the halide that we're using? Bromide. Right? So, but now if we continue to, to add more bromine to this, and now all of a sudden we decide to add more bromine and it'll replace one more of these, uh, these hydrogens. Right? So now we no longer have a bromoethane. We, we, we do, but we really have a 1, 2 dash di bromoethane, right? As we continue to add bromines. And, and again, we could continue to add them, um, you know, we could continue to add them, and pretty much the end result will be some kind of mixture that it will be some kind of a brominated product um, that will actually form. And really, we, we can separate them um, using processes like distillation.